I got a text message uh, to the group text message that we have. You remember? Yeah. Uh, and Jesse hit us up and said, uh, "Warcraft Three Reforged." What was he? He said flopped or bombed or something. whatever it was. It's like one of the worst games ever right well, now. It's okay, got, so it's got a point five on Gamespot or something. Whatever the game ranks, game Metacritic, something. Metacritic. That could be it. So for me. When I first saw that first line, I uh, my antenna goes up. My hater antenna goes up. So anybody goes, oh, this game sucks. I'm like, does it suck or are you just saying that? Or is it just like fanboys of the old one or protective of yeah, this like, new one? Did it, did it bomb or, or did it, like, do you have like an arbitrary goalpost that you're moving? Yeah. And so I was like, what, what does that mean? bombed and i'm not even a warcraft 3 fan but i just wanted clarification you played it though right i've played it yeah yeah way back in the day yeah way back uh when i should have been doing other like productive you know going to school shit but apparently you actually i i i who have my thumb on the pulse of all video game Everything I don't really. I have a couple of fault, small channels. I well, watch. when it comes to but like, <laughs> if, if I ha- if somebody said to me, this thing happened with Blizzard or with World of Warcraft, and I needed to fact check it, you're the person I would call. Yeah, well, I, I have I have a couple of of my favorite developers and stuff, and Blizzard has been one of them, and it seems like it may be altering soon because Activision and whatnot have been doing a really weird job of keeping tabs on stuff. They released a game that they promised... Okay. Welcome to End of a Species podcast. Before we get too far into it. I'm I'm Adam. If, you, if you're not used to us like not having an intro until much <laughs> later, then go back and listen. But yeah, I'm Jeff. And this is our End of a Species podcast. And we're going to be talking about... It's going to develop into a broader topic, but mainly like games that don't get released in the proper way, fashion, working. They're full of bugs and other nonsense. So anyway, Activision Blizzard released a game. It's been about two weeks now. Uh, and y'all were waiting for this for a while, right? This This was a game that was... This was announced not a year ago. A year and a half ago at BlizzCon 2018. Okay. They, at the end of it, you know, they're like, hey, we're remaking Warcraft 3. It's got all these new cutscenes. We're updating all the models. We're redoing the story to fit more with Mad the lore. applause. Yeah. People are cheering and screaming. There's a pre purchase. You can pre purchase the game. It pre purchased the all ends. And then it was saying, coming summer of 2019. That was the first, should have been the first indicator for us. Oh, this is coming out in less than a year. Great. Not so much. So, summer of 2019 came and passed. Nothing. No word on it. No talking about it. No one's mentioned it. It's like, okay. (laughs) I can imagine somebody asked him, did we say that? (laughs) I don't remember that. It... (laughs) <laughs> we don't remember that, but it's, it's still posted on the game page is that summer of 2019, this game's coming out. Fake news. <laughs> That's a fake page, you guys. Yeah. What is this with the gotcha questions? Yeah. So it came and went, and then people were asking, like, hey, it's all it's it's November. Like, we've got what you're doing in December with some stuff. Where is this game? And they're like, oh, glad you asked. Coming out January of 20, uh, 2020. And people are like, oh, okay. It's like, we wanted to make sure everything was good and right. And we had some development issues. You know what I think whatever. happened was they, not that they forgot about it, but somebody dropped the ball. And when they were, they when they started seeing the questions get asked, they were like, oh, <laughs> fuck. Um, hey. Yeah. And, and instead of it being like, glad you asked, it was like, how close are you to done on this? <laughs> Nowhere near. Yeah, Go ahead. you know there was a, I don't know if it was, uh, E three twenty fourteen or fifteen, where Square showed up, and I swear to God, I was like, if they don't have anything about Final Fantasy seven being remade, either yay or nay, they're not getting out of here alive. <laughs> 
And sure enough, they had a thing where it was like, hey, here's Final Fantasy VII. We're going to remake it. And officially, officially, and they had like a like a tr- just a, a, a pseudo just a trailer, quick trail. Like this is we're Thir- doing it, like thirty seconds, like of just some visuals. And then, of course, people have follow up questions. Who's directing it? That guy. And when they went to that guy, he was like, "Damn, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, uh, this is a good way to find out." So it's <laughs> the kind of the same. I think companies have that where when. They they try to have their finger on the pulse of like what can we get away with with the fans and when the fans start like frothing at the mouth or something they're like oh, oh damn we, we throw should, them you chum the water at that point though throw them a t bone steak real quick I don't care if it has meat on it or if it's cooked <laughs> just throw it to them like get get them away from me for throw, a minute th- give them this and then get out the door <laughs> let them let them swarm this and then tear this apart and then when they are looking around for their next victim we're gone yeah. <laughs> We made it out. But, Pull the limo around. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so this they're like, oh, great question. You know, it's coming out in the end of January. And they're like, oh, great, cool. So they go, and then they wait, and then they wait, and then they wait. And then, surprise, hey, this game comes out. And it doesn't work. Like, not only does it not, like, is it just bad, but, like, people can't log in. People can't play the game. They don't have features that were promised. Everything looks the same as it did on the old version. So, like the it came out, the original version came out in two thousand three. Some people said, you know, doing comparative shots, the two thousand three one looked better than this one. And I'm like, if you've got <laughs> over fifteen years of graphics and processing <laughs> over on a game, like you innately should look better. And if you don't. By a large margin, that's then a problem. You, then you done fucked up somewhere. Yeah, that's a big. <laughs> that's a big no no. And so people are complaining. There's this huge thing about like I go into lo- play a mission and then I log in. And as soon as the screen lights up where I'm able to play, it says you're defeated. <laughs> and so like they can't play the game. So there's no way for them to continue the missions. Um, there used to be a whole list of. Um, updates that were going to the multiplayer, like creating game types and maps and everything, and none of those worked. Clans and groups and stuff were all changed and different or didn't exist. Uh, there was also this nice, like, four paragraph policy change of where, like, hey, if you create a game type in our game, we own that and you can't sell it and turn it into another thing because if you don't know, Dota, which is Defense of the Ancients, was originally a game type created in the Warcraft 3 engine back in who knows when. And they tried to sell it back to Blizzard. Like, hey, do you want to create this type of a game? Because this could be really cool because it's all just the heroes and you're trying to, you know, destroy like a base object. And And they're like, no, we don't want that. That's fine. Whatever. And then it goes on and blows up. And now we have Dota and League of Legends and... League of Legends is yeah is makes bank because there's there's sorority houses full of sixteen to twenty two year old dudes that like that's they're required to play this game for their job and that's it <laughs> so it's like it's it's there's a lot of money in that and Blizzard missed out so they are making sure that they do not miss out on this but chances are there's nothing then for them to miss out on because nobody wants this game <laughs> well you know what so and here's the thing even if it was awesome. Just the fact that you're saying it's mine means you're not going to have anything cool come out of your engine anymore. Because what they're going to do is they're going to find something else to to make the group next great idea out of. So you've you know, limited creativity because yeah. no one wants to put in the effort of like, oh look what I did, and like, oh no, look what I did for Blizzard and didn't get paid on and didn't get any recognition, and they're just going to steal it anyway and then try to sell it. Yeah, and then try and sell it Ouch. and make money. So, so this whole thing comes out, fans rage, and legitimately so. Like, if you waited over another eight months off after a time period where your game was supposed to come out, and then it gets released, and then it doesn't work, like, people would have been pissed off if you pushed it back again and again and again. But, like, we're like, you know, you do the thing where you're like, we're very sorry, we're trying to make sure this is perfect, 
We don't want any bugs like we had in the first one when it released. We didn't want any of the issues that we had when we released it at that time. We want to make sure all the interactions and co connectivity for what we're doing all work and have no issues. It's it's just polishing the game. We we want a perfect user experience. People would have been mad, <laughs> but they wouldn't be this mad. Because you've pushed out a thing that not only how can much, they... Just out of curiosity, how much did this thing cost? 40 bucks. Thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah. So it's not like twenty dollars and then you get the game. It's forty dollars. It's like the cost of a game that's come out, but it's been out for like five six months, and the hype, I like the hype you, is kind of down died down on it. We kind of have similar approaches to how we look at money, and I think you told me this a few weeks ago, where you look at it as like, what other thing? What other thing is, is this costing me? Is this costing me? And forty bucks is pretty beefy. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah. There's My a, brother hit me up today. And told me that um, that uh, what it, what's the game Division Two was for five was listed for five dollars at um, what's that place? Oh, the fuck place, the yeah. fuck GameStop. Games, fuck GameStop. Yeah. <laughs> and so he he knows my stance on GameStop. So on the phone, he's like, "Yeah, I know, I know what your position is, but it's five dollars for Division Two. And I instantly was like, "Yo, that's a fucking sub." <laughs> I have no interest in Division Two. Like five dollars, I could I could buy a sandwich with that. Yeah. So I'm giving up a sandwich for a game that's gonna sit on my shelf and I'm not gonna play it. Yeah. So and, you, and it's, it's 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 the it's the intrinsic value of the item, basically. Yeah. Because some people like the same way people covet, you know, comic books and stuff. Like, oh, I would love to have a X Men big issue number, whatever it is. You know, and I'll gladly pay one hundred and fifty dollars or whatever it costs for it. But the nether, next person is like, no, I've. You know, it's, well, how much is it? it says? Paper and crayons. <laughs> it says two fifty on there. Why am I paying two one hundred and fifty dollars? Yeah. But then that same person, you're like, oh, Peyton Manning signed this football. Oh yeah, one hundred and fifty <gasps> bucks. Yeah, don't, I'm down one hundred and fifty bucks for that football. Leather and marker. <laughs> So it's it's the intrinsic value you give your a personal worth to an item and how much you feel, feel that item is valued at, but forty dollars for a game for even for just nostalgic purposes because it's already been developed it's already existed like you can go and play this game or you could play this game and play through the story and get all the important elements and have fun because the game still worked it was great um, I have the original game. Uh, but <laughs> this game comes out and it is a train wreck and people are crying about it, blaming Blizzard, blaming Greed, blaming Activision, blaming everyone under the sun for this thing. And then people start putting, you know, their money where their mouth is. They're like, look, I don't like this game. It doesn't work. I want my money back. And Blizzard gives them the middle finger and says, no, you're not getting your money back. And even then, if they have more accounts with Blizzard, like if they have a Warcraft or Starcraft or whatever, they get banned for asking for their money back. No. Yes. <laughs> People are getting banned. They're like, I want my $40 back because your game sucks. And then they're like, oh, yeah, well, you can't play any of our shit now. And they're turning them off. And I was like, oh, my God, this is delicious. Wow. <laughs> Look, the, the optic, yes, and I agree 100%. That's one of those things. <laughs> we... So, end of a species is really big on the on the shade and Freud. Like we love seeing train wrecks. We just it's not even like we can't look away. It's like we have to look at it. Like yeah. we enjoy it. But the optics of that is terrible. Oh <laughs> my fucking god. Like hey, you have literally spit in my face by giving me and and not for nothing. Warcraft 3 is not a disliked game oh no it's a it, very it's much a liked very game. revered game in you know it's just in, in the it, like it, it did a lot to establish the lore it was so popular that parts of it are rehashed in world of warcraft like hey we did this in world warcraft 3 yeah. you get to relive it here yeah or and, even then this game spawned the the creation of other games that are massive now yeah like league of legends dota dota 2 like, these are massive IPs now that all came from this game. There's a lot of work that came from this game just in the general gaming community. 
and to re-release something of like, hey, everything's going to be better, and it's crap. <laughs> and then, and then you when want somebody, your money and of course, back. And, and here's the thing: it's like if you grab an IP, like when they remade Tomb Raider, people liked Tomb Raider. Yeah, but it was like it had it had its own falling. There were there were people that were it, massive it, it, on it. It's a it's a niche game, but even the people that really loved playing Tomb Raider are not like, yo, I need to get a new Tomb Raider. So when they remade Tomb Raider and it was really good, it was like, wow. It would, the people were surprised. Like, oh, I expected another, oh, my God, that game is awesome. Yeah. But when you get a game that people look at, like, hey, I want to remake Super Mario World. And, like, <laughs> you know, or go back and remake Grand Theft Auto 3 or some shit. Oh, You yeah. had better put... Like, the expectations are going to be there. Well, the expectations are there, I would <coughs> say, for, like, Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Like, those, they've been promising this remake for a long time. They've been talking about it for a long time. And now they're like, okay, we're re-releasing it, but we're making it so big that we actually have to release the game in sections. <laughs> we can't release the whole thing at once. So, like, there's going to be three acts, and we're going to release this game here at this act. And then there's going to be an act two that's later. And I'm telling you, that's a risk because if if the first part of Final Fantasy VII Remake is not, like, perfect, and you're charging 60 bucks for it, and it's just Midgar, yeah, hmm, yeah that's going to be a problem. So... <clears throat> When so when this game was when people were denied it, it turned into the, the name of the game is Warcraft Three Reforged, and now it's got a term on the internet of Warcraft Three Refunded, and <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And people are asking for their money back. They're taking to Twitter. They're taking to YouTube. They're taking. I mean, obviously YouTube. We're here talking about it, and I'm not even directly involved in this shit, this shit. Um, and. They're requesting their money back. They're telling them that they're getting banned, and it just starts exploding. So where people go to, to go and hit Blizzard where they can is they go to this critic spot and start <laughs> reporting their their score of this game. And this is currently the lowest scored game in the history of games. It's impressive. It's a point five out of 10. And Okay, so what a lot of companies nowadays don't... I, I don't know if it's that they don't realize or they don't give a fuck. It's that your reputation could change on a dime with social media and with just how interconnected everybody is and how mass hysteria... Mass hysteria on a plane is one thing. Now, pic, picture that and the whole world is the plane. Like... 10 people start out with an opinion, they go to 4chan and Reddit, and all of a sudden you got 20 million people saying the same thing. <laughs> and not that it's not to discount the opinion, but they don't realize that if you don't get ahead of stuff like this, your shit is going to get like stomped in so bad. And like you have to worry about optics because now anything that Blizzard, you know, I. You and I had conversations about the what we thought was insane. Uh, well, I don't know. It, for Diablo Immortal, the fact that people got so like, "What do you mean you're making a mobile game?" Yeah, and I'm like, "Oh, every, every, fucking everybody makes a mobile game. Like, everyone the, makes a mobile game. Eventually. Let them make a goddamn mobile game. It like, could be good. <clears throat> Just depends on how much you want to play for it. And if you don't want to play it, don't play it. Yeah, I mean, whatever. And, and so we defended that amongst our own conversations. Right. But that doesn't change the fact that this is bad. So now, if you thought people were going to be like shitty to you when you announced a mobile game, <laughs> what's going to happen to Blizzard when this fucking game comes out? Right? Or anything else that they come out with. Yeah. They're going to be like, well, no, I'm not buying that. You know, <laughs> you, you put all your heart and soul into that. Well, I'm going to just, I don't even care if it's good. I'm going to walk it by. Because <laughs> of Warcraft 3, fucking you owe me 40 bucks, motherfucker. Yeah. And so the the hard, some of the hardest part of this was not only did it change this game not work how it was intended. It's not working for people. They can't play it. They can't do this, that, and the other. But they also changed the, the networking systems for it on like how you find a game and play with people online or locally or whatever. 
and it changed it for the original as well. So the original game can no longer be played the same way it was because the way their server, which is called Battle.net, works. So all of the connection, playing, clans, all of that's changed to the new system, and you can't play it the same anymore. So now you've not only <laughs> pissed off a potential like new crop of people that are coming in to play your game, but all the people that you had locked in before... You pissed all of them off now too. <laughs> you know, you know what <laughs> really all flipping out. You know what really is like from that time. When did Warcraft three originally come? Two thousand and three, I think. Two two thousand three. So, I mean, in two thousand three, I think I think two War, World of Warcraft was two thousand five, and World of Warcraft three came out a couple of years before that. So I think it's two thousand three. Double check because. I know from 95 to about before the PS3 came out. So from 95 to 2005, there was a lot 2000, of... 2002. July, okay. July 3rd, 2002. Even better. But in that in that span of 95 to 2005, when you had Doom, uh, Dark Forces and Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight, uh, any manner of game that would come out and the game that's on your disc... That's the game you got. Yeah, that's it. That's all right? it works. And so that was the that was the mark of games back then. And whether it was that or Nintendo 64 or PlayStation 1 and 2, the game that's on your disc, that's the game that it is forever. By, by hook or crook forever. And this kind of cheapens that a little bit. It does because now now they're talking about and the game's been out for 2 2 weeks now and they're just now saying like, "Oh, don't worry, by next week we're going to have some patches. And I think this they got this got announced like a Friday or whatever. And <laughs> they released it. They're really Oh yeah, by next by middle and middle late ne- uh, late of next week, we're going to have some patches to fix all of this. I'm like, if it was only going to take 2 weeks, why didn't you wait 2 more weeks to put out the game? Why why is why is it got to take you ruining your reputation to get some people <laughs> to just write some code and fix some stuff? Like what is this? So, a, a little bit of thought went into this on the internet, and there's a group of people that believe that it all comes down to straight greed. And I'll tell you why. Is the game released on a Tuesday two weeks ago? Uh, what is that? The, I'll look it up. But anyway, the... Um, the, the week of... it was So that must have been, and not to toot my horn, but that was the week of my birthday. The week of your birthday. Okay. Um, so it comes out and they have a quarterly meeting or it's the end of the year meeting. I'm not sure which one, but they have this meeting that that says that, oh, this is when all of our finances for the year are done. We need to make sure that like top earnings and so on and so forth. What can we do to get us a little bit of a push to make sure we meet, you know, such and such for investors? Let's release Warcraft 3 Reforged. People are going to love this game. Is it ready? No. Push it out anyway. <laughs> and so they released this game like a week and a half before their their earnings you know, end. And it's a train wreck. And now they're talking about you know, refunding stuff, giving people money back. Your reputation has dived. Was this worth it? Like, <laughs> it, like a board you of know investors. What just occurred to me is, all right. I like Blizzard games. I played, um, I play Overwatch. I love Overwatch. Diablo. I, I play Diablo. I love Diablo. Um, and I'm a I'm a I'm a filthy mudblood because I play the both on console. <laughs> so whatever. take that take that as as you will. Take that for whatever you want. But um, did you say that they're canceling people's like when they ban people, they're canceling people's WoW accounts? Yeah. So let they're, me. So let, so their entire like everything's under like one username umbrella. So like this particular you know so, I, well, ID has you you've paid for this game and this game and this game under this this user ID. They're banning that umbrella, and so like you've locked you're now locked out of everything. So <laughs> here's the thing though, like I'm not gonna buy Warcraft three. I played it when it was out, and I don't have nostalgia for Warcraft. Like, I like the IP. 
Mm-hmm. But I'm not. It's not one of my. It's not like my love for Zelda. It's it's. You know, if if you bring it over and we're gonna play, cool. Oh, that's cool. Orcs and yeah. humans, yahoo! But <laughs> which that honestly, that should be the game they should have remade. Warcraft three, yeah, but like remake that old thing, yeah. Like because there's you like I don't know about now because we couldn't. We thought I originally thought this before, but like there's no way they could fuck that up, right? <laughs> like updating <sighs> that old one because they did it. They had the company that that made this. Do a remake of StarCraft, the original one, which came out in like, I don't know, like 94, 96, something like that. And they remade that, and people were awesome. They loved, they think, oh, it's so good. It feels just like the old one. And they did a mild remake, and it was good. I'm going to come back to that. Remake Orcs and Humans. Because I never played, I never played one, and I never played two. I just, I started at three, and I'm like, I'd love to play one and two. Let me, okay, so first off, the people that are buying Warcraft 3, are paying is it fifteen a month for for, for WoW for World of Warcraft? Yeah, it's fifteen yeah. a month for. World they're of paying. Warcraft. They're they're the ones. That I'm not paying. I'm. If I get a few months where work is not super busy and I have a bunch of time, and then I know that I'm going to be playing at the same time that you're playing, because that's one of the things. Is like I don't. You want to play not, by yourself. I'm not a social person, so I'm not going to make friends on WoW. That's not a thing. <laughs> so I gotta, I gotta find time when you're playing. Then I'm gonna go and be like, you know what? Let me get my, uh, my shaman back. I'll put, I'll put, you'll put in for a month, you know, and you'll play for a month, and you're like you'll hit your quotient, and you're like, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or maybe a couple months, and you might yeah. get a few bucks out of me. But these motherfuckers that you're banned, like they're probably people who are, who are on auto pay. Oh yeah, like it's or, nothing. Like they don't even care. They might they might be away on Mars for two months and still keep their account active, just because. But not even that. Some of them pay by the year. There's there's subscriptions on World of Warcraft where you can pay for three months at a time, six months at a time, a year at a time. So so some of these people that are like, hey, your game sucks. I want my money back. I'll reinvest it into World of Warcraft or another game, or I'll buy that expansion for StarCraft that I haven't bought yet. And if you give them their and money you, back, they're go- and you fix the game, they're gonna rebuy it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're but, not gonna not buy Warcraft. Like this is why you made the game to begin with. Is because you know you have a a contingent among your fans that are like, you made what now? <laughs> yeah, here's my money. Yeah, and, and so that that brings up a second question: is for this whole investors thing do pre-orders count because i know you you had the game pre-ordered right i had the game pre-ordered but i have not played i haven't touched it i haven't downloaded it i haven't done nothing because i was in the middle of stuff that week and my loving wife got me a number of switch games and i'm like it'll be there when i get back so i've been playing those and then this catastrophe (laughs) maybe it'll it'll kind of might it might be there when i get back but like it, it's this. I saw this catastrophe happen, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, "Should I ask for my money back? Should I wait? Like, I don't know what to do yet." So, so, but yeah, I pre-ordered. My question would be: Do they count pre-orders? Like, if if they if more than fifty percent of the of the total sales of this game were pre-orders, do they count for last year? Because then they could wait and whatever. And then the last thing is companies. If you sidebar. <laughs> If you do not have the resources to create a thing that you know is your is your baby, and more importantly is the baby of the people that play the game, because I don't agree with like I don't think I love Zelda, but I don't and I don't feel like I have an investment in Zelda, like an ownership stake. I'm a guy who buys a Zelda game and I play it, right? So that it is what it is. However. There are fans out there that if you if you put out the wrong shit, they'll be like, "Why did you ruin?" They use the word "my my game," <laughs> and so stop outsourcing this shit. Just if you don't have time to do it yourself, just say, "Yo, we can't we can't do that," and still put out this other thing that you want us to put out, right? And and just leave it at that. Well, here's an, here's another thing that happened last year with 
the Activision acquired Blizzard. They're now a shared company. It's called Activision Blizzard. Word. So there was a thing that happened in Blizzard Town <laughs> where <laughs> they cut a number of their QA <coughs> personnel, like a couple hundred of them. Which anyone who doesn't know, QA is quality assurance. So making sure that the game comes out correctly and on time and like, oh, these are the bugs and things that need to be addressed before you release this shit. Not really a pivotal part of no, any company. No, Of course not. Um, so they cut a, no, a couple hundred of these jobs and then they go off and then they hire dev- like, you know, a third of that in developers. They're like, oh, we're going to crank out new IPs and this and that and we're going to make some new games for everyone to, you know, love and admire and enjoy. And I'm like, okay. That it seems like you could probably if you're a growing company, you don't necessarily need to cut that many jobs to hire this many more people. I don't understand quite the reasoning. It sounded it sounded money hungry to me, but I was like, okay, whatever. And now this is your next big release since doing that, (laughs) and look what happens. Yeah, I the, think there's some show in what happened here because it's the two guys in office space came in and said, "Hey, QA, what do, what do you do?" <laughs> and they didn't answer it right. So yeah, so you got fired. Go. Yeah, so but this this is not a new thing, you know. This has happened with Warcraft. It's it's very fresh in everyone's mind. This game has essentially been ruined for a number of people for a very long time, and it's going to take a lot of time and effort to get your customers back and do something to like show your interest in, you know, protecting them now because otherwise you ain't going to get it. I'm not optimistic and I'll tell you why. Uh Um, When your motivation is to make games that are, or to make products that are great for people, then you may have a slip up on the road and make something that's not great but you're still your north star is still hey i want to make good stuff i want people to like my stuff and mm-hmm. therefore i'm going to make stuff that's good for the people to enjoy it which, and they, which will then then turn and give me money for it yeah. so i can continue the process of making bigger and better stuff so yeah but when your north star is i want to please my investors you look at all the fans that you ran over as just speed bumps on the road and you're like oh whatever if They're they come fodder. back they come back if not other people, there's other people over there that'll buy my shit. I don't care. And that kind of sucks because, especially for games and especially for companies that have been around a long time and IP that has been around a long time. Because now we're getting to that point. You know, uh, let's forget about uh, Mario, Link, like the uh, Sonic. Those are ones that are always going to have something, you know, the the... The mascots for Nintendo and Sega from, like, 85 to 95, what, that's great. But now we're getting to the point where, in the golden age of games, PS1, N64, PS2, uh, GameCube, Xbox, those are starting to turn ages, right? Yeah. PC gaming around, like I said, from 95 to 2005... That started to become a thing, and those characters are starting to turn where, you know, almost drinking age, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, if that's the case, then... Actually, yeah, if you had a game come out in 95, that's a 25-year-old joint. (laughs) Yeah, I know, do the math on some of this shit. That's entering the draft, you could drink, (laughs) vote, drive, like... you Rent a car. Your insurance is low, all of that, you better be owning a house, all of that shit... Yeah. So you you could have been out of college. You 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 know you're having kids of your own. Like if you had a kid at twenty or twenty or so, like you've got a ten year old now. Like <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so in in that in the in the spirit of that, right? You have to those characters like those IP. They have to be kind of not protected, but some care has to be taken. And the North Star should be. Hey, we want to make great games for the people that have been with us since 95. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? They have jobs and money. They will spend that money on shit you make. (laughs) Surprise. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I would feel, and that's how you get jaded, right? Like, and I I see it. I see 
it with um I mean there's the there's the kind of millennial kind of thing and not to not to call out any whatever but really it mostly it's millennials that like the entitled generation that we have where this game wasn't 1000% perfect they missed this one feature that I really really wanted but the game ships fine yeah um I, look pokemon is a great example pokemon sword and shield came out and it didn't have a full pokédex right yeah Okay. And people I have not played any any of these games. You've talked to me about them. Yeah, but like, but, but people complained about that and the fact that when you go online and you go into the area where ev- where you can see everybody, like the wild area, mm-hmm. the frame rate drops a little bit every now and again. But that that happens, you know. But and I mean sometimes it really drops. But I'll say this from the game, day that game launched to today, it has had one update, and that was to add that little expansion pass logo that's on the <laughs> bottom right to tell you there's an expansion coming. I was able to play through the story of that game, the post game, do trades, fill out my Pokedex, go shiny hunting, do everything, and never once did I see something that said, oh, the game crashed. It didn't work. Your save got sh- screwed up. Oh, th- you went to this area? Yeah, we didn't quite finish. Yeah, you uh, fell through the floor. Yeah, none of that, none of that happened. Yeah, and so what I what I say that not to say that Pokemon Sword and Shield is a perfect game, but just to say that you almost hear the same kind of jaded language from people about something like that, or let's rewind time. You know, I've mentioned it before: Battlefront Two, Shadow of War. You hear the that same language. As when when something really egregious happens, so it almost gives you like a. That's why when I got that text message, my eyes narrowed. Oh, yeah, and I'm like, citation needed. <laughs> and it's because I've seen so many people cry wolf on these things. Oh, this game is terrible. Yeah. it's all screwed up. It's all this. It's all that. But like, it's not. It's working as intended. You just didn't like the way they did it. There's a difference of like, I go to play a mission and then the mission crashes and tell me tells me I'm defeated. Before it even finishes loading in, as opposed to like, oh, they changed the way this character looks, or they didn't, or they removed the fact that I could add lightning to an attack, or so, whatever. I'm just making shit up. But yeah. Like, I, you know, you should have been able to to do this instead of doing that. And I'm like, that's just a design choice, you know. And there's nuance to quality. Like, hey, the frame rate dropped on a game, and I don't just mean Pokemon. Like in any game, mm-hmm. you know, you have people out there that will. Well, it's supposed to run 60 frames per second all the time. Yeah. And for this section where there's 100 enemies on screen, it went down to 29, got a little shaky. Mm -hmm. But that's not picket sign stuff. That's (laughs) like, hey, just letting you know, in this section, my my brother, when when I was talking to my brother before, he also told me about uh, Days Gone. Yeah. There's apparently, now I have no interest in that game either. Um, I've seen streamers play it. It looks fun. Mm-hmm. I just don't have time to play it, but there's apparently a section where there's a horde that comes at you of zombies, and there's supposed to be 600 of them in that horde, but the PlayStation can only render 300 of them at a time, so as you kill them, it adds to the rendering and you see the rest. Yeah, but that seems reasonable. But you see the entire, like you end up fighting the entire horde, and I'm like, yeah... It would be nice if I could see all 600. I mean, I don't know what that looks like, right? I don't know if it's like, oh, well, now I can't even... And R2 agrees with me. Yeah. But <laughs> um, at the same time, that's not a broken game. Like, you can... you're, you're If you yeah. count the wings in your bucket, it's how many buck- wings were advertised. There's 600 zombies that come at you. Yeah, it's a fight of it's a fight of where you're fighting 600 zombies. And I'm thinking you're gonna die a lot. There's only 300 on the screen at every at any given time, but like you're you don't have nuclear capabilities to like one shot kill. I'm all sure if they force the, the software to to render all 600 and your PlayStation crashed and bricked itself, you'd have a different fucking <laughs> complaint. <laughs> exactly now exactly. you get to play nothing yeah but but, but yeah there, there is nuance to it and i you know everything that you told me about warcraft 3 and everything that i've seen or heard since 
release about it makes my it makes my stomach churn because I know what that's like to really be excited about something coming out and then have it be broken, right? It's yeah. it's not a good feeling, especially when you're churning out dough. Um a lot of the people think about this. A lot of the people who were getting into these um these different uh whether it's uh like styles of gaming or whatever. Whether it's Warcraft or just people who like PlayStation gaming in general, like if you were a teenager in 95, 96, you're pushing 40 now. So God bless you. <laughs> a, God bless you because I just turned 40. But also... I'm still 23 years old, so I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> so, but all, but... But also, the the thing is, when you're a teenager and you're working off of your allowance, hey, mom, can I get, you know, whatever? Mm-hmm. But unless, I mean, even people who have a decent salary job, 60 bucks is a lot of money when you multiply it by how many fucking releases there are. Yeah. There's a bunch of games that I'm, like, curious about playing, but curious about playing doesn't open my wallet. Yeah. I have to play opens my wallet. Yeah. You know, so... 60 bucks or 40 bucks, that's how I look at it. Like, if you spent 40 bucks on this game and it's not working, think about what other games and the other stuff that you could have dedicated time to for $40. And on PC, god damn, there's a lot of fucking PC games. If you have a Steam account with on, on Steam and you pick up stuff during their summer sale, $40 will get you a dozen games oh, or yeah, so. Yeah, I remember last year this- you fucking, you sent me a list and I was like scrolling <laughs> it's like oh yeah this game which was 39.99 is now a dollar 27 i'm like jesus i'm yeah. like yeah this is worth i have a number of games in my steam account i haven't touched but i got them for a buck something <laughs> it's almost like, like you're gonna have to tell your kids to carry on your like look this is how far i got in the list you have, you have to, to finish, you have to finish this you have to finish what i've started <laughs> it's like the rogue legacy real life edition yeah But this is also, I want to bring up another little thing, though, is that this is not the first time that, like, this is one of the most recent and egregious errors of this. But I also want to bring up, like, kind of one of my love hate relationships with another developer that I like, which is Bethesda. And Bethesda. Oh, Bethesda. Bethesda makes makes a couple of great games, like Fallout, Elder Scrolls, um,. Uh, they're doing Doom. They're doing the new Doom you series. Said, you said Fallout, right? Yeah. Which also causes a lot of <laughs> Fallout. Uh, <laughs> crazy, suspiciously enough. Don't look. But, but they've guys out there. Do not. Don't write like. Just don't Fallout. <laughs> we get it. Mm-hmm. But don't. You know. So, you, you don't want to go to the comment. Just. We know. I, I feel we, you. We already know. <laughs> but we we all we we know. So they f- four years now, and I will say, the first Bethesda game I probably played was Morrowind back whenever that was that, yeah. that released. Um, I played that on, which was impressive. It was impressive. It was extremely impressive for what it did. However, that game also s- helped spawn this generation of m- you know people that created stuff for that game that got no money for it and paid and whatever. But they created mods for the game to adjust how things worked and the way things looked. But also, Bethesda has a huge habit of letting their customers finish their games. Because they ship with a number of crazy bugs that don't work. (laughs) There's a number of times when you can't complete a quest because some other thing you did beforehand interfered with it. And so you're not allowed to complete it anymore. What was the quest in Skyrim at the Magic School? That like you were supposed to, like there was a a spell that they cast on you. Oh, they cast like a polymorph or, or some like a, some yeah. yeah. But for whatever reason, it didn't cast on me, and I'm never gonna finish that mission. Yeah, exactly. I'm not starting over. You can't go back because you also the 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 character that cast the spell on you 
is not supposed to do anything until you turn into yeah. another character, until you turn into that other creature or whatever. But now you've not turned on it, and the spell missed you, or you resisted it, or whatever. And so now it doesn't work. And so now that que- you can't go and talk to her because she's waiting for a thing to happen. And so now you can never finish that quest. It'll never finish. It's done. So there's you have to go back and fix all... Like, their customers went and bought the game and then looked at the code and then went through and fixed it and did, like, unofficial patches to fix the game to make them work the way they're supposed to. And Bethesda never did it. They never did their updates. They're like, oh, let them do it. It's fine. And that's not the way to ship a game. The game should ship and be working. Now... With the current way modern technology and stuff works is like you should be able to like, oh, we didn't realize our QA team missed this in, in a week or so. We'll have a patch moved out and it'll fix it. And hopefully it's my but like all big stuff like, you know, major, you know, movement and updates and falling through floors and stuff that should not happen. And Bethesda is ludicrous, ludicrously guilty in so many instances in most of their games. Since I want to say, I don't know about Morrowind, but like at least since Oblivion, which was the next one, and then <laughs> Fallout 3 is notorious for it, yeah. New, New Vegas is notorious for it, uh, Skyrim was notorious for it. They've all had major things, and I don't even want to get into Fallout 76, I haven't even played that thing. And I know people screamed about how people hacked that game, and how they just you know, make misery on everyone else that plays, and that's why that game is doing jack shit for for subs or subscriptions or players or anything, is because it's 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 the Wild West in West Virginia or whatever. But like <laughs> people people are ruining other people's gaming experience because there's no rules or f- bug fixes or corrections or whatever. They're people are <laughs> One of the things I saw is that people were taking file types from Fallout 4, and then they're just, like, copying, pasting them into Fallout 76, and all of a sudden they have, like, power armor and blimps and aircrafts that they're flying and blowing stuff up, and, like, none of this stuff is intended to be the game, but, like, they take that information... And put it in this game, and the and the the engine knows how to run it because it's the same engine from Fallout Four, and so they just obliterate all these people that are like walking out of the vault, and they're like, "Oh, I just bought this game. It's so nice." And then they're getting nuked by people with I know R two. It's so pathetic. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys something about R two. This is like a Sphero R two that I keep on my desk, and the only <laughs> reason you're hearing him now is because the computer he's connected to I just didn't turn it off, so he's powered on consistently. I think this R2 is alive because he only reacts in the proper way of whatever it is that you said. And he doesn't have a like a microphone or anything. Can, can R2 th- be our third MC for their, our podcast from like going on? Like, I think we can get that to happen. Yeah. I think we can. We can I have a, a, <laughs> a terminal for him to, uh, to plug in, on, to the, in. On, the, on the podcast desk. Yeah. It might be a, a new thing. Adam and Jeff and Arthur <laughs> playing. Talk. Please, Disney, do not. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're going to want to uh, send people. Just don't. We, we, we understand. But, but any case. we're sorry. Yeah. But any case. But Fallout 76. It's trash. So Fallout 76 didn't, t- did that. We did, like, and there's another of, uh, of other types of games. EA's pushed some stuff out. I can't think of any more of the more recent ones. Ubisoft. But, like, Ubisoft. There's a mission that I can never finish on Assassin's Creed Odyssey for that reason. He's, um, R2's played, too. Play, he knows what, which one. Well, he was there when I, when I was playing. Oh. And, so he's like, just reckoning, you know. There's a, there's a, I don't even remember what the mission is, but it's something, I, you know, you know what it is? It was the mission that you got for pre-ordering the game, which makes it even worse. Because that's another weird practice that they have is like, hey, and and they almost flaunt it. And you know who flaunts it the most is fucking the the, the people at GameStop. I remember they had a <laughs> well, no, I remember they Fuck had GameStop. a commercial where one person went to a place and there was all this loot there, and their friend went to the same place and there was nothing. Like, don't miss out. Pre-order the game. Like, miss out on what? Like the game. <laughs> Like you cut out a part of the game because I didn't pre-order. Yeah, but the um, one of the pre-order missions has to do with a blind dude that wants you to tell him about different places, and when you're done with that, 
there's supposed to be a treasure somewhere. Except that I'm a completionist, and the treasure is in like an early game area, and I already got it. <laughs> so you already went so, there and collected it. For the mission to close out, I guess it's programmed for when you go to get the treasure, but the treasure's gone, so if I go there, there's nothing to grab, so that mission is just sitting there. Oh, it's dirty. <laughs> And I'm like, well, all right, well, I guess I'm never gonna hundred percent this game because yeah. I'm not start. I'm not look, guys. I don't yell and scream. Um, I don't go to Twitter. Like I'm a, I consider myself, as far as gamers go, I'm an old fart. So I'm not, you know, I vote with my wallet, and so I'm not buying the next one. Like whatever it is, if if it gets to a certain point, I'm just not buying it. Yeah, that's what it is. And, and like, and, and, I'm not and, starting game. Like, I don't play games tw- uh, for me to play a game twice. It would have to be like Final Fantasy VI, like Knights of the Old Republic. Like, it would have to be fucking a, an amazing game. Yeah. So if your game is like a seven, nah, it's I'm you gonna get, play through it once and be like, get, oh, that was a cool story. You get your one. <laughs> Wasted some time on it, cool, and then keep it moving. Yeah. So. It's just it. It seems to be more of a be, because of the age of inner downloads and day one downloads and expansions and all this kind of stuff. It seems like quality assurance is like less of an issue with a lot of companies, and it shouldn't be. We should be able to go and buy a game, not necessarily have to have an internet connection. And it's it like should everybody's just work. a free, like literally. You know what? They used to pay beta, beta testers. Yeah. They used to. <laughs> and now, like, you're the beta tester. You bought, yeah. like, hey, if you pre order the game, you can beta test it. You know it. how fucking amazing, like, that's the coolest Jedi mind trick. Like, <laughs> hey, if you give us the money up front, we'll let you beta test this broken piece of shit <laughs> and tell us how to fix it so that you can get the rest of these motherfuckers to buy it. Yeah. Oh, exactly. that's brilliant. Oh, man. I don't feel so bad about it no more. I, I, you know what happened, though? As, like, I think that's what happened with. Uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, like the multiplayer, the online role-playing game thing, the mm-hmm. MMORPG, because a lot of Do people... Do you still play that or no? I have an account. I've played it, you know, like every couple of months. Like, I'll play it for like a week okay. and see where it's at. Um, I think the last time I played it was about a week before Rise of Skywalker came out. I played it for like a week. Well, that's and understandable, that's, and that's because it's that's because I was frothing for yeah. st- for Star Wars content. The week before and Rise of Skywalker was very just Star Wars heavy for everybody. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> but I I just I'm tired of buying or seeing released just broken stuff, and they expect us to just like oh we'll just wait we'll get done with it eventually once we're done counting our counting our cash another activision Treyarch, whatever like call of duty is notorious for that whole beta testing shit like hey we didn't finish the game but if you pre-ordered here <laughs> and it's and i'm gonna tell you they it's it's under the disguise of let's stress test our servers which i get but when you go to this it's like yeah but you didn't we're, we're playing an unfinished game let's let's yeah. let's keep it a buck yeah um, be, be real about stuff because we're not dumb, and, like, then, and then and then we'll rage on the internet. We'll <laughs> and that's something. To be honest, with the PTR, that's something that Blizzard actually gets right because mm-hmm. they go, "Hey, do you want to do this? Cool, you can do it at your leisure. And if you want to see at your leisure, at your leisure, we're in the U.S. <laughs> and if you really want to like see the, some of the new features or how we're going to change some of the balancing." Go ahead, go go and play on the PTR, and you know you'll which you'll, is the public test realm. Yeah, yeah. That's for means. those that you know, we're giving out the, uh, the acronyms, acronyms for Muggles, um, but that's a good way to do it. Not hey, well, if you pre-ordered, uh, ver- like what is it? it well, Legion was seven, so you're on eight. So this is Battle for Azeroth. Yeah, Battle for Azeroth is ver- and then eight. The next and so, one, next one is Shadowlands. So if you pre-ordered Shadowlands, <laughs> give us money up front, and then you could be part of the beta testing team. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a that's a crazy pyramid scheme. I love it. Mm-hmm. 
And it oh, always, I never and even it, thought of it that way. And it gets you invested. It gets you invested in the next one. Where it's like, oh, well, I've already played it on beta. I can go through and get it done real quick, and then I'll be max level before everyone else, and you know, I can beat the game. Whatever. I don't know. Whatever. So if you're a, if you're a video if you're a gamer out there, right, and and you want to know the most efficient way to combat this type of shit, right? First and foremost, because I know you're not going to stop using social media. That's fine. Social media is very powerful, but it only works with nuance. So if you see a game that's done, but there's a thing on it you don't like, temper your response and make it proportionate to what the fuck just happened. It's not a... Do not say, Monolith is so greedy and they suck and they shipped us a piece of trash. Just say, hey, I, I don't like microtransactions. Yeah. And, well, and don't also, participate. Which is also a much more constructive way of getting your point across. Because I can't tell you the amount of times I've been on a forum for a game, like trying to look for something up. And somebody's talking about the most recent patch and like, it's terrible. Why? And yeah. they're like, or this is garbage. I'm like, oh, they're so greedy. I'm like, oh, or they're so stupid. Or they're so that tells nobody anything. Yeah, it's it's like, trash. hey, look, mission three on this whatever. I can't get past this particular point because for some reason he's invulnerable to damage, and I don't know why I can't attack him. Like, why is what's the but problem? You, but, but, but that's a more. Specific- but in reality, it's more like, hey, mission three. One of these banners it doesn't move when the wind hits. All the other banners move. That's really what what I hear when people go nuts like that. Yeah. And it's like only... That's the minor stuff. Yeah. The more, like, I can't finish the mission because this particular thing is not working. That's legitimate, you know, yeah. stuff. If you, and if it's that's also what con- it is... And if- it's also constructive. Like, they can, they can be like, oh, that's a problem. We need to go look at that. As opposed to, like, your game sucks. I'm like, well, the whole thing sucks. Well, then don't buy it or play it. What? Yeah. It doesn't... It helps no one. And so in a... <laughs> So that's the that brings to the second point is like if it is indeed something that's broken in the game, yeah, send the feedback, but also no, this is you're sending feedback to a company, a colorless, faceless, like there are not a lot of Corey Barlogs in there. If you don't know who Corey Barlog is, just look him up. He's a great game director, cares about you know what people think of his game, his games, right? So. Most of the time, at this point, gaming has become such a huge behemoth of an industry that you have corporations behind it that, unless they really think you're going to affect the bottom line, nah. you send them a tweet and look what happens. They're going to, uh, we don't need that feedback. Get rid of them. Yeah, exactly. So just keep that in mind. And vote with your wallet. So when another game comes... Like, Konami? Konami can't put shit out for how they treat a Hideo Kojima. The next major shit that Konami puts out is going to sit on the shelf and collect dust for ages. I guarantee it. There's gonna, <laughs> Unless they put out something that's specifically geared toward people that have never heard of what a video game is. That there, should, like, there should be no reason for somebody to purchase something from Konami. And with reason. However, Death Stranding was the first project that Hideo Kojima put out after he left Konami, the first major project, right? Uh huh. And it was it was I. Right. I mean, it wasn't terrible. I it wasn't. I didn't, I didn't play it. Did you play it? I I've watched people play it, and the reason was, again, because I have to. You I have ha- to. You have to. I have to be very strategize. Se- there's selective. Some, there's strategy involved in gaming, and yeah. there's and you know. The other day, I saw somebody playing um, what uh, Yoshi's Island, mm. Mario World Two, and they were like, "Huh, you're making deliveries while carrying around a baby." <laughs> this is where they got the stra- the plot for Death Stranding, and I just started laughing. But it was a complete game, yeah. so you know you could take it or leave it. That's really where they lost me. Is like you're carrying around a a what a baby in a pod. It- all right. Well, um, there's there's some more to it. From what I've watched, is like there's a lot of more interesting things to it. And yeah. It's, it's the, they've even said like it's not a game for everyone because it's not fast passed. It's not an and that fast and pay, that I think paced. is the point is that that I'm not going to say anything bad about Death Stranding. It's not from what I've seen. It's not for me. 
Yeah. And I, I love Metal Gear. Mm-hmm. I've played every Metal Gear. But Death Stranding wasn't for me. Now, if I was to buy it and play it, am I going to be like, oh, you guys stole my money? <laughs> <laughs> no, it just wasn't for me. It's a complete game. There is a product there. And there's a huge difference between saying, oh, Death Stranding is wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And saying, Warcraft 3, uh, it, it won't let me log on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm defeated. Starting the mission. I can't, yeah. I can't fucking play it. Like, yeah. that's, that's a world support. Like, you ruined my childhood Like that yeah. I enjoy. <laughs> I can't. You know, I've been follow. I've been playing Metal Gear since Metal Gear Solid. Went and so not the old old like when it was just Metal Gear, but yeah. since Metal Gear Solid, right? Yeah. And I can't say, oh, Hideo Kojima's reputation is destroyed because he made a game that eh, it's not my cup of tea. No, it looks good. It, it looks good. I've heard people love that game. It was their best game from last year. That it was so awesome. That. But here's also another little thing is like a lot of people that have played it and played it all the way through still aren't completely sure what the story is. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also some of Hideo Kojima's, you know, yeah, thing is like he's he's got some storylines <coughs> that's a little back and forth. But he sounds like from what I people said that they loved it and they loved the interaction, the story and the gameplay and whatever and some people didn't and you know, whatever. If you love the game, great. If you love our podcast, great. If you don't, eh, it's okay too. No, yeah, it's that's, not for that's everyone. perfect. Just don't pick it outside my house <laughs> because um, <laughs> it's not going to turn out good. No. Um, however, I'm Jeff, and you can find me at 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 sign Zeus and Jeff Zeus letter N Jeff on Twitter, and I am Adam, and you can find me at Tatooine Hermit. On Instagram. You know, on purpose, like I've been meaning to put both of those in the uh, show notes on the podcast and on YouTube. And I don't do it on purpose only because I want to be petty and exclude (laughs) anybody who can't spell Tatooine from our circle. So, yeah, if somebody uh, hits me up on Twitter and asks me how to spell, well, I guess they would have to spell it to ask me, right? Yeah. But if they spell Tatooine wrong, like, hey, I went. At Tatooine Hermit. I couldn't find him. Blocked. <laughs> Insta-blocked. And good for you for doing that. However, if you're on YouTube, whether you know how to spell Tatooine Hermit or not, press that little like button. Yeah. Comment, subscribe, share to your friends. Let, Let us know, know what you are gonna, you want us to do. What do you want us to talk about? Any of your thoughts? Tell us a game that you've recently played that didn't work the way... It was supposed to. Not necessarily that like the frame weight was low whenever something happened, but maybe like, hey, I got this game and it says that it has you know this feature and it doesn't work or it just crashed or whenever I put it in it won't let me load in a character or do whatever. You know, an actual game breaking thing. Where- For me that was no man's sky. <laughs> And that was after they fixed it because it yeah. still didn't do like everybody was like, oh, they fixed it. And then I, so then I went and bought it and it still didn't do any of the shit that they said it was going to do. I'm like, I'm still, I'm still by waiting. myself on a planet, like doing nothing. Yeah. Like mining with a handheld laser or whatever. Whatever yeah. it was, I was I watched just like. You, I watched you play it for a little bit. It looked like it could have been fun, but it needed to develop into something else. Yeah. Like this well, needs slowly. to. This needs to move into something else. Quick. Like, did you ever play Spore? You know what? I think uh, that's EA, right? It was EA, but it was like after they were done doing like Sim City, it was like their next step. They were like doing that Sim, uh, The Sims, and then like they did Spore. Yeah, and it, you start as an amoeba. Yeah, and then the game develops and changes and different stuff as you evolve. It yeah. was crazy, but like it needed to, it needed some of that. Like you know, you start. As you know, a guy in a tiny little ship doing mining stuff, but then like maybe you develop a city and get colonists and like have it expand into something. And just don't bigger. make it take two thousand hours of gameplay, because <laughs> no one has time for that. Yeah, we'll see you next time. <laughs>